So, guys, remember to lean into the mics a little, and that'll kill the feedback if you start doing something funny. Congratulations. All right, excited to welcome the Alabama contingent to the stage. Along with Coach Nate Oates, we have Mark Sears, Ryland Griffin, and Mohamed Diabate. And we will follow our normal procedure with an opening statement from Coach, followed by questions for the student athletes. A couple of the standard reminders please silence your cell phones. Um, provide your name and media affiliation when you ask a question. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. Um, when you're finished with your question, if you give the microphone back to the mic handler, that would be great. Uh, if you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We'll address those questions in the room first and get to Zoom as time allows. And please remember not to record press conferences in this area on cell phones or cameras you'll be able to download audio and video and transcripts from ASAP as soon as this is complete. Coach? Uh, character one, I think, you know, we uh, had a chance, could have folded it, a lot of things didn't go our way. You know, a lot of foul trouble. They lived at the free throw line. Our guys started to show a little frustration. I thought we, we pulled it together and showed a lot of mental toughness and we've been using the word next a lot lately, next play, just go to the next play. Like, forget about the call that didn't go your way, forget about the turnover, forget about the offensive possession where you missed or your teammate missed you. It doesn't matter. Just play hard on defense. It's one of our best you know, defensive games of the year. I mean, you know, we fouled too much. They shot 37 free throws. We obviously benefited from them not shooting it great at the line. But, you know, when we didn't foul, we got pretty good stops. I mean, Ty and Grant Foster's the real deal, but you know, he scored 29 and went to the free throw line 16 times and took 22 shots. So I, I thought our guys weren't bad on him. They forced him into a lot of tough shots. You know, Mark, on the other hand, had 26 on 18 shots and only 11 free throws. So, you know, probably a little bit more efficient. But I, I thought our, you know, Ryland did a great job on tying. Mo Diabate came in late and was great on both ends. He scored eight straight points after Jaron fouled out. We, we needed a boost. You know, his boost he gave us right there, defensively and offensively. Ryland's in foul trouble. Jaron's fouled out. Thought he was great. So we're, we're playing next Thursday, 
uh, there's only been 16 left. I think our non-conference schedule got us ready for this. Four teams in the non-conference are all in the Sweet 16. And, you know, we lost all four, but I thought we got better from it. So our defense is getting better as the year goes on. This might have been our best defensive performance of the year. It's been our best for a while. And Wright, Wright's will be able to play with us Thursday. He got elbowed in the head, had a head injury. He's had some real bad luck here lately. But, you know, we're going to be playing again, and he can play with us again on Thursday. All right, let's open it up to questions for the student athletes. We'll start right down front. Hey, Nate, uh, Brandon Clearwaters with skyboat.org. Um, we saw number 12 leave to the locker room. Can you give us an update? Let's go to questions for student athletes first and follow protocol. Okay. Sorry. Questions for student athletes right here. Uh, James Torman Aldrich with the Argonaut. Rylan, you mentioned your, uh, the, you know, the fouls that were called there before Coach got out here. Um, just how you were able to stick in the game for those final four minutes uh, when you were in foul trouble late. <clears throat> um, Mo Diabate was able to guard uh, Tyon Grant Foster, so that helped me from picking up my fifth foul. So just like it, it, it's March, like you need everybody to step up. Like Mo, he probably didn't play as much as he wanted to until the end, but he came in and he was ready. So just being able to have guys like that to be able to help me keep me on the floor, not only just me, but pretty much everybody is just like, it's great. And that's something that coach preaches every single day. Uh, I want to ask about, about kind of that, that final stretch. Mo, you came in, kind of had eight points and I think eight, eight in a row with the last four minutes or so. Kind of what, I guess, sparked that for you in that final stretch and kind of did you realize like the magnitude of what that, you know, run accomplished? Um, I was just playing hard and I got lost in the game, honestly. I wasn't thinking about scoring. I just let the game come to me. Um, coach put me in with a few minutes left of the game because Jaren fouled out and, you know, I just try to play as hard as I can and let my defense contribute to offense. And that's what I did. Uh, this is a question for any of you guys. You guys were going back and forth with the crowd there late. Um, I know SEC has some great crowds. What did you think of the GCU fans and also the Bama fans kind of going back and forth as well? Mark? Um, I'm saying it, it was fun. You know, that's what basketball is all about. You know, when the fans are going at it. And as a player, you know, that's, it, it's part of the game and we love it. Rylan? Uh, yeah, it's March. Like, um, they had a definite home. They had a, a good crowd. Um, but like I said yesterday, the game is played on the floor. So, you know, just love the atmosphere. You know, it doesn't matter if we got fans for us or against us. Just love the atmosphere. And they were ready to go. As soon as we got on the court, they were out there. So, um, but uh, we just had to make sure we won the game on the floor, not in the stands. Mark, how would you describe what? How would you describe what Mo provided for you guys that last five minutes? He won us the game the last five minutes. You know, I think he had a stretch of like eight straight points or something like that, and he got old boards and he did it on both sides of the floor. We don't win this game without him. I asked Mark um, Richard Obert, Arizona Republic. I asked Mark about. Grand Canyon only made two of 23 pointers. What were you guys doing on the perimeter to try to get them off their mark? And then they just seemed to, I don't know if they were tight or you guys were doing a great job defending the perimeter. I say we, we did a great job of defending the perimeter, but we also tried to be in the gaps because we know, we know um, uh, number seven is a great player and we, we wanted him to make him pass the ball and uh, they really didn't excel in that area. Uh, Julie Mitchell, WBTM 13 in Birmingham, back here, sorry. Um, this is for, for each of you. Uh, over the last couple of days, you all talked about how you all have come together, how tight this group is. Uh, your brother in right so goes down. How did you all rally around him and go in a survival advance here? Mark, let's start with you and then go that way. Can you say that again? Yes, uh, you talked about over the last couple of days, this team has really come together and been so close. Uh, your brother goes down in, in right so Jr. there. How did you all rally around him and get this hard-earned win? Uh, we uh, Once we came in at halftime, he was right there dapping us up. And, you know, when we was in the locker room, we was like, we're going to win this game for him so we could play on Thursday. And that's what we did. Uh, Rylan? Um, for me, like, Charlie, like, that's my brother for real. So <clears throat> just, you know, he came from the West Coast. Um, that's where he was at last year. So he got some friends and family out there. Um, so, you know, I came in, in in the team and I like I was like, there's no way that was Charlie's last game for the season. So. 
you know, just made sure we had to get the – for me personally, I just wanted – I know he wants to play. I know he didn't want to get hurt today. Um, he, gave, he went out there and gave everything for us for the time he did play. So I was just like, let's make sure we make sure Trelly has a chance to play again for us this well, season. Mohammed? Um, we play for each other every game. Um, we know how much Trelly, you know, wanted to play in L.A. And so we seen how hurt he was once he went out the game. So we just try to um, do everything we can for him. All right, that's all the time we have for student athletes. So we'll dismiss them and come back to questions for coach when they've cleared the stage. <laughs> All right, questions for Coach Oates. Uh, once again, Nate, Brandon uh, from skybook.org. Can you give us an update on uh, player number 12? Yeah, well, Trell Reitzel's got a head injury. But, so he, he couldn't play in the second half. On the aisle. Coach, you kind of mentioned it was kind of your your best defensive performance of the season. That final four minutes, you guys didn't allow a single point. What, I guess, happened in that stretch that, I guess, maybe sparked that run defensively? I didn't, didn't realize they didn't score in the final four minutes. I knew, what, what, what did we get down? We were down th three, four. We got down four at one point. Yeah, I think our guys, well, one, Mo Diabate came in. And you know, I'm looking right now on our defensive chart. Like we were 0.64 on defense when he was in the game. You know, you look at his regular stat line. In 12 minutes, he had five old boards, nine points. Was a 0.64 on defense. He's just a tough player, and he's never afraid of the moment. He just does all the dirty work all year. I'm super happy that he was able to come in and like really help close this thing out for us. So, I thought Nick Pringle's play was as good as he's been all year. I mean, he didn't necessarily score it a bunch, but, you know, he had nine rebounds, four old boards. Dubate had five old boards. You know, we ended up with 20 old boards on them. They, they were big plays, both of them, when they're getting old boards. You know, Mo Diabate, who's not a great free throw shooter, goes three of three. So I thought Nick and Mo really helped set the tone. And then this is as good a defense as Mark Sears has played all year. First double-double of the year. You know, he had 26 and 12. I mean, he played so much, he was cramping there at the end. I didn't feel like I could take him out much with Reitzel not available in the second half. But we were .79 when he was in the game. So uh, he, he was really locking up and leading and talking to guys and getting them to play hard. So I think you had a group in there with Sears, Rylan, Aaron. Aaron's been really good defender all year. Mo Diabate and Nick Pringle that – it was all about getting stops and then taking care of the ball, and then we were able to step up to the free throw line and make some free throws. Coach Michael Bethley with the Black Lens here in Spokane. Um, you talked about how character won you the game. Can you just explain how important attitude is going into big games like this before, doing, and after the game? Listen, I, I thought our attitude was good coming in. We were focused on the right things. I mean, you know, you heard Mo just talk about losing himself in the game. like. Focus on making the tough, blue-collar, defensive-minded, old boards, great screen assists. Focus on that. The offense will come. Our offense is one of our worst offensive games. You've got to give Grand Canyon a lot of credit, too. they got great athletes. they got rim protection. They made it harder on us. You know, So they're a good defensive team, but we just missed some shots, too. Some guys missed some free throws, maybe. So I thought you know, when we got a lead, we didn't do a great job extending it like we could have. They took the lead and we could have folded easy. And I, there was a time when I got the whole team, like we just, we got to change our energy. So attitude during the game, you know, it's basketball, there's going to be tough calls. I mean, just tons of marginal calls. Some go against you, some go for you. You can't live and die on every call that goes against you. I thought, our, you know, our guys did a pretty good job. Some calls that were marginal that they got, you know, and they, we had calls that were marginal that we got. like. But our guys did a better job tonight, just moved to the next play. Whether it was a you know, missed layup on their own, a turnover on their own, a, a call that didn't go our way. Like we were able to just next play, next play. We get, you know, we get down. They got great crowd here. Uh, shoot, they're, they're, whatever their administration, their school's doing to get the crowd. I, I played once there 
when I was an assistant at Buffalo a long time ago. They had a great crowd then. I think it's much better now. But, you know, it was there, they had a lot of people here. That thing got loud when they got the lead, and then our guys just hung in there and got stops. And just the whole attitude of we got, got to get a stop and move to the next play was big. Nate, I, I know you're in foul trouble and you don't have Latrell, but what was the thought of going to Mo in that in that situation there with like five six minutes to go? And as you're watching him contribute that way offensively, you're like, "Where's this been all season?" kind of thing, or, or you know, how how were you looking at that? He's been a tough player all year. You know, he's struggled sometimes on offense to grab some of the concepts, and he's you know, he even said it happened in high school. It took him a little while to get familiar with his system and then he ended up being Nepsack player of the year which is a really good league so I, we knew we knew we needed some tough plays we also knew they give up a lot of threes so you know analytically thinking we need some three-point shooters in Sam Walters Griffin Sears Estrada Mo doesn't really fit that bill but man we were lacking some toughness there and let, let's put a guy in that's gonna make some tough plays and shoot he played 12 minutes had five old boards Thought Pringle made some really good reads in the pocket. You know, Sears hit Pringle, great. Mo cuts, scores, got to the old boards. And he just made some stuff happen. I, and I'm super happy for him. I mean, he's like, as literally had the greatest attitude. Even, I mean, Nepsack, Nepsack player of the year doesn't play a ton as a freshman. Some games he doesn't play at all and never had one second of any kind of poor attitude. He's just been an unbelievable kid all year. So. Super happy he came in and won this game for us. We have time for two more questions for Coach. We'll go right here and then right here. Coach D. Jackson, CBS 42 in Birmingham. Uh, you, your theme is blue-collar basketball. And this game in particular, what were your thoughts on how physical and how emotional this game played out for your team? Yeah, we let our emotions get the best of us, and myself included, with the T that didn't help. And then Pringle got the T. We said it. Halftime, like we're not giving away any more free points. So you got to be emotionally invested in the game without doing things that cost you points and stuff. So uh, th that way we were, we were good. I thought our bench was great. We went a little over the line a couple times. But as far as the blue collar stuff, like we chart blue collar points both ways. Like this game, we had 115 and we had them with like 95. So we had 20 more than them. Uh, like this is almost a season high for us with 115 blue collar points and, and you kind of look like, you know, Aaron Estrada rebounded it great. He ended up leading us, you know, he had diving on the floor for loose balls. Uh, it, he made a bunch of tough plays, but Sears was over 20. Nick Pringle was over 20. You know, we had multiple guys in there putting their nose in, making tough plays. You know, Sears has a double-double. Sears, Sears wasn't going to lose. He wasn't letting us lose tonight. And a lot of that was how blue collar and tough and, you know, he was great on defense. I thought it was the best defensive game. So we kind of get to – we lead the country in scoring. We play fast. Our offense has been number one in the country for a large part of the year. But we really try to build the program on toughness, blue collar, and it hasn't been what we'd like to see all the year. It was there tonight. Without it, we don't win tonight. Last question. Nate, in your opener, you mentioned the 37 free throws. Do you think that was more of a matter of you guys being too physical at times or maybe some whistles that you didn't think were fouls? Probably a little both. I mean, look, to be honest with you, you know, we, we fouled two three-point shooters. That gave them six. I, I looked at them. We, we fouled them. Those were correct calls. So we got two tees. That's another four. So take 10 off, and all of a sudden it's 37 or 27, 22, and it's not – nearly as big a discrepancy. So we've got to do a better job not fouling jump shooters. Sears fouled a jump shooter. You know, they got eight free throws off jump shooters and four off tees. Like, don't foul jump shooters. Don't do stupid things to get tees. And, you know, take those 12 away and it's pretty even. So I, I, they were physical, we were physical. If it had been 25-22, nobody would talk, be talking about it. we got to do a better job not putting them to the line on, on plays that we shouldn't be putting them to the line, like three-point shots and jumpers. All right. Thank you, Coach.